So I wanted to start this series off by talking about the title of the novel, Ulysses. Um, and in the introduction video, I talked about how I liked this uh, vintage edition and that James Joyce would have wanted um, Ulysses to be read this way. But actually, the, that statement is uh, pretty much false. Uh, James Joyce probably would have hated this um, edition just because of the title page. And I'll tell you why. There are two reasons. The first one being... Um, the color of the title page. It might not be totally clear um, in this video, but this book is um, has a green cover, a green back, and Joyce would not have liked this because um, he purposely wanted to make his book blue, and that was actually the color of the first edition, as opposed to green, green being the color of Ireland, and blue being the color of um, of Greece and the sea. Um, my college actually had a copy of one of the original um, editions of Ulysses. Um, and again, it's hard to see here, but this, uh, the original edition was completely blue. Um, and the point basically here is to convey this idea that Joyce really wanted to bring a Hellenization um, of Ireland, a return of the Greek heroes into Irish culture. Um, as a way to elevate Irish culture, but as I'll, tell you, as I'll explain later, it also goes the other way around. So the second reason why Joyce would not have liked this cover is, is uh, because the designers here have spoiled kind of one of his big jokes, which is that the title you will see is it contains the word yes, which is the final word of the novel spoken by uh, Molly Bloom. And so in a way, you will see it about, is about getting to the yes, you know, that kind of... Um, that kind of famous book now about uh, making agreements and kind of getting to uh, some sort of compromise. And this is what I really think Ulysses is trying to do because, you know, there's there's kind of two ways you can interpret the title. The first interpretation, which I would say is the, the modernist interpretation and kind of the more common interpretation, which is that what Joyce is doing in this title is he's taking the lives of everyday people, specifically of Leopold Bloom, who's kind of just an everyday uh, person, and elevating their everyday lives to the status of heroes. So Leopold Bloom being elevated to the level of, of Odysseus, Ulysses. The other interpretation of that goes the other way. I would call this more of kind of like a postmodernist or, um, or a deconstructionist, deconstructionist perspective, which is that uh, what Joyce is doing here is he's taking uh, the heroes and the myths, um, the things that kind of led the Irish uh, restorationist movements um, in literature, in the, in the Irish culture of his day, uh, with people like uh, W.B. Yeats, etc. Um, he's taking those kind of heroic mythic figures, in this case, Ulysses, and actually bringing them down to the level of Leopold Bloom, going to the bathroom, taking a crap, you know, obsessed with people obsessed with sex, alcohol, um, and things like that. And so what I would argue, though, is that Joyce doesn't want, you know, one interpretation over the other. He provides um, both interpretations as plausible uh, as the good Shakespearean that he is. And what this book really is about is trying to get to that point where you can hold both interpretations in mind and form some sort of compromise and get to that point of yes, of affirmation, of the ability to keep going forward into the future. One thing that we learn in high school English classes is that the first word of, uh, for example, Shakespearean plays are oftentimes the most important. And while this is uh, mostly just a cliche, James Joyce does not incorporate this idea of his title being related to the first word of the text being related to the last word of the text. He was very intentional with what uh, words he picked. So in the same way that Ulysses is connected to the last word, yes, it's also connected to the first word of the book and the word stately. Um, so the book begins, Stately Plump Buck Mulligan. And so obviously with this giant letter S, we're drawn to this word stately. And, you know, beyond um, just the fact that stately contains the word yes in it, but backwards, um, it's also important to think about what exactly this word means and why he'd begin the book with this word stately, apart from just being a linguistic pun. So I searched up on dictionary.com and one of the definitions of stately is majestic, imposing in magnificence, elegance, um, and dignified. And so you kind of can see just in this definition already a sort of ironic um, intention here 
you know, majestic, imposing, and magnificent. Obviously, it has the kind of modernist, um, modernist overarching uh, narrative and mythic element to it, just like the title Ulysses does, but it also has that kind of comedic, uh, self parodic element, um, which is kind of the deconstructionist perspective. And so you get those kind of two sides of, of the story already in the first word. And you can see the method of the title being played out um, just in the first chapter itself, where Buck Mulligan, a very, very ridiculous, um, comedic character, is very ironic and makes fun of everything, is taking something that's sacred, so something that's an element of Roman Catholicism, and bringing it down uh, to his level, um, to the level of him and Stephen. And of course, Stephen is someone where is someone who's having trouble um, dealing with the fact that he is being taken out of Paris and into this land of Ireland, which he views as crude, uncultured, um, but it's also something that he wants to produce art out of, to write a novel about. And so again, you get this tension between the high and the low, and how can you find the in-between so that you can create art. Now, one other thing about this title is that Ulysses uh, resembles another word that's used um, a couple times in the novel, which is the word useless. Um, and it's interesting, the way that Joyce uses that word to show how both kind of interpretations, you know, working from the high end of the mythic and the heroic, but also working from the low end, the dirty realism, the, the, the getting down to other people's levels, that both of these methods in and of themselves is not useful for producing art, that you need to find some sort of compromise, some sort of medium between the two, having both at the same time, um, this sort of uh, modernist cubist method, I would say, of approaching reality, of representing reality, something that Joyce does very well in that he uses stream of consciousness, or at least something approaching stream of consciousness to incorporate both the high literature, high cultural uh, references, as well as the day-to-day -day thoughts of, of everyday people. And so what I really encourage you to do as you're entering this text and thinking about, you know, the parallels with the Odyssey, etc., etc., don't get too bogged down on uh, the parallels and, you know, this scene represents this scene in the Odyssey, uh, but just recognize that Joyce's method here um, overall is the method of parody, and that's what's important. Ulysses is a parody of Leopold Bloom. Leopold Bloom is a parody of Ulysses. That Joyce is always kind of having um, high and low culture interact with each other. And the method by which he does that is through parody, through reenactment, through pretending, through uh, acting, which is what he learns from Shakespeare and something that he enacts through in all those chapters, but especially um, in the chapters past chapter 10, in which that parodic element becomes a part of the form itself. Um, one thing is that the first nine, ten chapters, you know, they're parodies, but not but in terms of the content, not in terms of the style itself, which is something that you'll notice.